Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild Part 33 The Internal Water Pipe Fittings So far I have put two water pipe fittings, an inlet and an outlet, on the main box bed. What I have to do now is pipe these up to the engine itself. Now I cannot use rigid piping because, well, it's just not going to work. If you think about it you'll see why. What I have to do is make some adapters for my pipe work and use some flexible piping so I can have the engine off the base, connect up the water piping and then bolt the engine down to the base using the studs that I made in the last episode. At the moment on screen I'm using my little Boxford lathe to make a pair of water fitting adapters. What I'm actually going to use is some silicone rubber tubing that I have to connect the parts together. This silicone rubber tubing is really tough stuff. It will easily take 100 pounds per square inch. I've used it for quite a while for running different steam engines on the bench. And if you watch my other steam engine videos, especially the ones where the engines are in steam in the garden, you will see that I use this same silicone rubber tubing that I'm going to use on this engine for many applications therein. On screen at the moment I'm showing the sequence of operations to make the pipe fittings. As this job progresses it will become more obvious what I'm actually doing. There I was just drilling the centre part to let the water through. Here I'm turning the outer diameter to make it a tight fit in the silicon rubber tubing. And now I'm reversing the piece in the chuck so I can drill and tap this end to fit onto the existing unions. And if you've been watching the other videos you will see that the unions are 3 eighths of an inch by 32 threads per inch. I quite enjoy machining brass, it's very free cutting, provided that the cutting tool is sharp. It's terrible machining brass if the cutting tool is blunt because it just skates across the surface and makes a right mess. A word of caution when machining brass, the chips that come off brass look really good, all nice and golden and very clean, but it's not a good idea to touch them because they really are razor sharp and they'll go straight into your fingers, and obviously eye protection is essential before you even start. Because I work with metal a lot, I frequently get pieces of metal stuck in my body. Thankfully it's only usually in my fingers or occasionally in my feet. And over the years I've spent many hours in major surgery using a pair of nail clippers to remove pieces of metal from my person. Normally I wouldn't leave the machining running this long, but so many people have said they like machining, I thought I'd put plenty in this time. This piece of machining, however, is quite important. I reversed the piece in the chuck, and what I'm doing is machining a shallow relief down the centre of the pipe. As you will see very shortly, when the silicone rubber is pushed onto these fittings and held in place with a couple of cable ties, it's just never ever going to come off while ever the cable ties are on there. If the shank was parallel, the pipe could be just forced off by normal pressure. I've purposely made these fittings to be a tight fit inside the silicone rubber pipe. The Texan pushing on, what I had to do is push it against the bench. But then once I put the cable ties around the relief part as I showed earlier and cut off the excess, that's never going to leak. With a little Loctite 542 on the threads of the existing pipe unions, I can then screw the new fittings complete with the silicone rubber pipe in place. And that's just what I'm doing here. After I run them up finger tight, I use a spanner to tighten them all the way. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.